What is up El Paso? Your local realtor here. I've lived in El Paso for 19 years, so I'm very familiar with the area. If you guys ever have any questions about El Paso, no matter how small the question is, or even if you just want to talk about the city for a while on a phone call, feel free to reach out to me. If you're looking to relocate to El Paso, feel free to reach out to me. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and start this video. You're going to see a bunch of footage of the city, so hopefully it really gets you to be more familiar with it. El Paso is a big city, guys, with the far east side being about an hour away from the far west side. But at the same time, it really doesn't feel like that big of a city because everybody knows each other. You feel like it's a small world here in El Paso. In reality, the population is actually pretty high. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into the first thing that you have to know about El Paso. All right, the first thing that you have to know about El Paso is that we are home to Fort Bliss. Fort Bliss is a United States Army post and its headquarters, well, it's in El Paso, Texas. Fort Bliss has been in use since 1849 and it's one of the largest installations in the Army. Fort Bliss trained thousands of soldiers during the Cold War, and it's extremely important to the USA. As a car salesman in El Paso, you will have many military clients. In general, just walking around El Paso, there are a lot of people in uniform, with a population of Fort Bliss coming in at about 12,000. Now, let's talk about the reason that I know you're searching up El Paso on YouTube for. The weather. El Paso is known as the Sun City. Before we get into what the temperature is normally like, I'm going to talk about how I felt about the weather this year so far, just to give you guys, you know, a realistic experience. In the beginning of January, it was pretty cold, and I was excited because I got to pull out the hoodies and the beanies. The cold died down, though, towards mid-January and went back to about 65 to 70 degrees. But right before Valentine's Day, it snowed in El Paso, and on Valentine's Day, I believe which is very random. I remember going to the gym in sweats and a hoodie. It felt pretty cool, I'm not going to lie. But snow in El Paso is actually always random. Sometimes it'll happen in December. Sometimes it'll happen in November, October, January, February, or most of the time, it just won't happen. El Paso weather is like your romantic partner. You don't understand it. But typically, it starts to get cold around October. Really cold in January, chilly again in February, and after that, we slowly get back to the heat. Anyways, we have a desert climate, and during the year, there's almost no rainfall. The average temperature in El Paso is about 65 degrees Fahrenheit, according to climatedata.org. The average rainfall per year is 8.2 inches. However, this year in 2021, between June and now, just June and now, we received 8.94 inches of rain. It was one of the wettest years in El Paso. And because of all of that rain, our beautiful Franklin Mountains turned green. It felt like we were in Colorado or something. We're usually used to like yellow slash brown. As for the humidity in El Paso, it has one of the lowest humidity ratings out of all the cities in Texas, actually. Living here all my life, I never walk outside and automatically feel sweaty. At worst, I walk outside and I'm like, man, it is hot. But it's no big deal. Walk back in my house with the air on or walk into my car, turn the air on and all is good. The sweat mainly comes from standing outside way too long. And then, you know, you start to sweat it. As for a summary of El Paso weather, the summers are hot and the winters are cold and short. When I say cold, I mean it's cold for us locals though in El Paso because we're not used to like negative degrees or zero or anything like that. By cold, I mean... 32, even 40 is pretty cold for us. Below 32 is freezing to us. Once we get in the 20s, we're panicking in El Paso. But that's it typically gets that cold for a short period of time. The lowest recorded temperature in El Paso was negative 8 degrees Fahrenheit in 1962, though. One of the things that I love about El Paso is the diversity. With the military population and being minutes away from Mexico, you see all kinds of beautiful people here. El Paso is a fast growing city though. It's growing at a 0.27% rate annually. And in my opinion, I expect that rate to go up soon. It's because people wanna live here. They wanna retire here and sit by the pool absorbing that dry weather. The population is sitting at a good 685,000 people. There's 2,663 people per square mile in El Paso, Texas, opposed to Austin that has 3,006 people per square mile. El Paso is the sixth largest city in Texas. 
And El Paso is actually 83% Hispanic. Because of that, the Hispanic entrepreneurs have so many delicious Mexican restaurants and food trucks. When you come to El Paso, you are able to taste the true flavor of the Mexican culture. There are so many Mexican businesses in El Paso besides the food. The food is just the best part. If you don't speak Spanish, do not worry. Many people speak English here and you will end up picking up on the language from your coworkers, gym partners, friends, cashiers, etc. Most parents teach their children Spanish first here and then the children learn English in school, which is why 72% of El Pasoans are bilingual. I remember as an elementary kid, I was so confused as to how everybody was speaking this different language. And I went home one day and I was like, mom, why are they speaking this and I can't? And my mom was like, oh, well, it's because we decided to teach you English first and we're going to teach you Spanish when you grow up. And thankfully, my parents and my friends and just the people that I've always talked to in El Paso taught me Spanish as I grown up. And you know what? I wouldn't say that they necessarily taught me it because they, I never got sat down and said, all right, this is how you speak Spanish. It's just a thing of you hear it so often and people are bilingual. So they say things in English, they say things in Spanish, and eventually it just connects in the head and you learn language. I've been driving around El Paso for quite some time now. And I can honestly say that traffic is really not that bad in El Paso. Very rarely you'll find yourself stuck in standstill traffic. Almost all the time, traffic flows like a breeze here in El Paso. Sometimes on a busy day or time, I-10 will be a little slow at 30, 40 miles an hour for about less than a mile though. And it'll go back to light traffic. There's a lot of road construction going on in El Paso right now on the west side and on Dyer Street. So those roads are a little annoying to navigate through, but still it can't compare to LA or Phoenix traffic. The closest we get to bad traffic would be I-10 heading from Central El Paso to the east side around 5.30 to 7 p.m. And that's because it has this exit that is the line to cross to Mexico. So that gets backed up and then it slows down traffic. Sunday is mostly green roads with moderate traffic at around 12 to 1 p.m. Mondays around the same time have widespread moderate traffic. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday are the same. Fridays and Saturdays have to be the busiest traffic days with the border crossing getting backed up. But overall, El Paso is easy to navigate through. Traffic really isn't bad. And you really won't find yourself getting stuck in standstill traffic and getting impatient with it. It's rare here in El Paso. Now, the next thing I'm going to talk about is probably one of the most important things in this video because it's going to be a huge factor into your decision if you want to move to El Paso or not. That's going to be the cost of living. Is El Paso affordable to live in? What is the price of a gallon of milk? What's the price of housing, etc.? Let's go ahead and get into that. All right, let's talk about the numbers first. Out of 100, El Paso has an overall cost of living of 81.4, according to bestplaces.net compared to Austin and Dallas, Texas with 119 out of 100 and 99.1 out of 100. Based on these numbers, you can see that El Paso might not be the most expensive city in Texas. Now, let me just tell you that the minimum wage in El Paso has been 725 forever. And just recently, big companies started upping it to about $9 to $16. And that $15, $16 mark is huge huge for El Pasoans because it really does feel like you're making a lot of money for El Paso. Now, with that being said, gas has gone up in the past year or two from $1.99 to $3 to $3.19. And honestly, when it hit $3 to $3.19, I was in shock because I never thought that El Paso would ever have gas prices that high. I don't know where you're watching it from. Maybe you're chuckling because that's not that expensive and you're at $4, but we were so used to $20 tanks and now it's $30 tanks at minimum. Along with gas, housing is going up. In 2020, the average price of a home was about 171,000 to 185,000, according to El Paso Times. As of 2021, the median home sale price of a home was $201,450,000, according to the Greater Association of El Paso, that I am a part of, of course. So the cost of homes has gone up quite a bit, but to get into a beautiful home, it's still much more reasonable than other cities in Texas and other cities just in the United States, as you can see by the numbers. Right here, we have a home in the $180,000 range. Right here, we have a home in the $220,000 range. And right here, we have a home in the $300,000 range. 
A gallon of milk costs $2.50. A meal at Whataburger costs about $9. I promise you, I promise you, the Whataburger meal is worth it. I love Whataburger. Like, I don't know where you're coming from, if you guys have in and out but I love Whataburger. And parking, parking is really only necessary downtown. $3 will get you 30 minutes, $5 an hour, $8 all day. A wheel alignment for your car costs about $100, and a big bag of chicken breasts is about $10. Overall, El Paso is a pretty affordable place to live in. We are seeing price increases all around as more beautiful families start to move in.